Hello friends, welcome to Concepts of Geology. We were learning crystallography in this session. Up to the last class, we have learnt about the correct choice of unit cell when a lattice is provided. We have done three classes in this series till now. So now on the fourth class today, we are going to learn about the unit cell saps on two dimension. Okay, that means the two dimensional lattices, those are called the plane lattices. Okay, so let's begin. So for today, our agenda is to find out what arrangements of atoms are possible in two dimensions and what shapes are possible as unit cells in two dimension. Okay, at the very beginning, let me clearly say that only there are five possible unit cell shapes in two dimensions not more than five so they are these ones okay first one is the parallelogram second one is square then diamond then rhombus and the last one is a rectangle okay now from this picture you may ask that what is the difference between a diamond and a rhombohedron in both the cases they are actually an elongated uh, square but we will use the term rhombus only when this interfacial angle will be 60 degree okay otherwise in all other cases we will call it like a diamond okay so these are the five steps those are possible as unit cells in two dimensions now i know very clearly here that this conception is somewhat too much hazy all of us have one question that why more than five steps are not possible okay we may avoid the complex steps like suppose stars or suppose uh, steps bounded by irregular lines but why the simple steps like uh, suppose a circle or a triangle or a pentagon is not included now recall the definition of unit cells uh, we have concluded on the last class unit cells were the steps those are repeated on three dimension through translation only and create the entire structure okay so that means the repetition should be only through translation and the shape should fill the space completely without leaving any gap now think of this circle let's examine this shape whether it is qualifying the definition of unit cell or not when i am repeating it in two dimension through translation see these interstitious voids are never going to be filled through this translational repetition okay so that means the circle being a very much regular and basic set is become incompatible for a unit cell set okay fine now think of one another basic shape that is an equilateral triangle okay we will repeat it through translation and examine that whether it is qualifying the definition of unit cell or not okay so while translating we are seeing that there are some interstitial gaps okay those are never going to be filled if i don't rotate it after a translation okay so translation and after rotation is filling the entire space completely but in this definition of unit cell rotation is not allowed okay so that means the equilateral triangle not qualifying as a basic unit cell shape in two dimensions okay similarly if i think of this pentagonal shape okay this is a pen regular pentagon okay whatever the way may be for arrangement of this pentagon this is the void space which is never going to be filled through this translational repetition so this is the cause i was saying that there are only five basic shapes those are qualifying as the shapes of unit cell in two dimensions I think you have got the point now. So we have these five possible shapes of unit cells in two dimensions. Okay. And definitely so they are corresponding to five basic lattices in two dimensions. Okay. So these two dimensional lattices are called plane lattices. Okay. Observe these are the five two dimensional lattices or plane lattices possible. Okay. They are corresponding to one unit cell shapes. First shape was parallelogram and the corresponding lattice is called clinonet okay look here in clinonet we have two vectors two translation vectors ta and tb and here ta is not equal to tb 
okay in this picture ta is longer than tb and the angle suspended between these two vectors is a general angle that means no specific angle like 30 degrees 60 degrees not fixed here the second one is called the diamond net okay here the set of unit cell in two dimension is a diamond okay i have already told that diamond is a shape that is modified from a square that means here ta and tb will be equal as in square all the arms are equal okay so here ta and tb are equal but this angle is a general angle okay that means this may be 30 40 50 whatever this lattice is called a diamond net the third unit cell was a rhombus okay rhombus is again a modified shape of a square where this angle suspended between two arms is specifically 60 degree only okay so this angle is not a general angle now this is specifically 60 degree and again ta equal to tb here because this is nothing but a modified square this lattice is called hexanate because if i take three rhombus in combination we may create a hexagon like this okay so here there is a presence of a six fold rotational symmetry we will discuss it later the next one is called a orthonate okay here the unit cell is clearly a rectangle that means ta is longer than tb or whatever tb is longer than ta but the angle which is suspended between ta and tb will be of course only right angle okay this is a specific angle so this lattice is called orthonate the last one is a square net where the unit cell is a square that means here both the translation vector ta and tb are equal and the angle suspended by them is a right angle so these are the five possible arrangements of atoms in two dimension okay these are the five two dimensional lattices that means these are the plane lattices so that's fine we have uh, concluded that only five steps or only five lattices are possible in two dimension okay but now we will try to find out what symmetries are present in this five arrangements okay so for that we need a basic conception of symmetries or rotational symmetries first okay an object is said to have a rotational symmetry when no changes can be determined if the object is rotated to a certain degree okay that means if i rotate the shape or the object to a certain degree while keeping your eyes closed okay and then you will not feel any changes after the rotation suppose think of a line or this shape okay if i rotate this line through its midpoint after a complete 180 degree rotation we will have no sense that the line or the object have at all rotated that means in this midpoint or at the center of this uh, shape we have a two fold rotational axis okay so this is called the two fold rotational symmetry again think of this equilateral triangle okay if i rotate it 120 degree so this point this vertex will going to be move here okay and this vertex will going to be move here and this vertex will going to be move here so that means just an identical image after the rotation okay so this is called a presence of three fold rotational symmetry the three fold rotational axis is present on the center of this uh, triangle a square is the most prominent shape which have a four fold rotational symmetry okay if i rotate it 90 degree through this center okay see the resulted image will be just identical with the previous square okay so that means we have a presence of four fold rotational symmetry at this center okay so after understanding the conception of the rotational symmetry we can find what symmetries are present in these lattices okay first think of this clinonet here ta and tb were not equal and this angle was a general angle that means only two fold rotational axis will be present between these two lattice points okay suppose here because this will be a straight line and we will have a two fold rotational axis on the midpoint of a straight line okay so the rotational symmetry which is present here is a two fold uh, rotational axis okay coming to the second lattice that is the diamond net here ta and tb were equal but the angle suspended by them was a general angle so clearly just like the before example here also we have presence of two fold rotational axis between this two lattice point okay at, at the midpoint of this two lattice point but what else symmetry is present here is a group of horizontal mirror planes and vertical mirror planes 
they are orthogonal to each other the next one is a hexanet okay here the unit cell is called a rhombus that means here ta equal to tb and the angle suspended between them is a special angle that is 60 degree only what are the symmetries present here definitely we have two fold rotational symmetry between in between this uh, two lattice point in the mid point okay and we have a maximum symmetry of six fold rotation okay six fold rotational symmetry as suppose at any point of this lattice those axes are represented here by this small hexagons okay the next rotational symmetry axis will be a three fold rotational axis on the center of this equilateral triangle made by the three lattice points okay so clearly we have three fold rotational symmetry on the center of this equilateral triangles two fold rotational symmetry on the midpoint of the lines those are made by joining the lattice points and there is a presence of six fold rotational symmetry at these points okay because if i add six lattice points through lines we will have a regular hexagon okay the fourth possible lattice was a orthonet where the unit cell shape was like a rectangle that means here ta and tb is not equal and the angle suspended between them is a right angle okay so clearly we have two fold rotational symmetry in the midpoint of this line constructed by joining the any two lattice points okay what else symmetries are present they are two sets of mirror planes okay mutually perpendicular to each other see this figure so this is the symmetry of an orthonet the last one was a square net okay this is having a four fold rotational symmetry on the center of this uh, square okay so a four fold rotational symmetry is the highest symmetry present here what l symmetry is present definitely there are two fold rotational symmetry at the midpoint of this line and two sets of mutually perpendicular uh, mirror planes okay these are all about the five possible lattices and their symmetries so now we can answer the questions made on the first slide what arrangements of atoms are possible in two dimensions okay there are five arrangements clinonet diamond net hexanet orthonet and square net okay the second question was what shapes are possible as unit cell in two dimensions there are only five basic shapes possible in two dimension okay they were parallelogram diamond rhombus rectangle and square so with this we have came to the end of this Uh, class i think you have understood the conception of plane lattices we will meet again on the next class with the three dimensional arrangement of the atoms okay till then goodbye and thank you for watching